Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Finally getting a chance to use some of the newer products from the Simon Says Stamp Believe in You release. Funny story, I had actually ordered this Cosmos Bloom background and the coordinating die set for the Thanks and Encouragement Word Mix one. I'll have links to everything, as always. But I had ordered them because they hadn't been sent to me. I really, really wanted them. And then I'm not even kidding, within like a day or two of receiving the order, um, I received the same ones in a package from Simon's. So stay tuned. I will have a giveaway in the near future. So I lost no time getting to use these stamps and dies though because they were, I think, some of my favorites from the release. I really liked this release in general, but this background is just, oh. So I was totally inspired by uh, Card Debbie Hughes did just the other day. And actually my colors ended up being similar even though I'm going with this previous week's color throwdown challenge. Anyway, she posted a card with this background and she'd used Distress Oxide sprays and it just, all, like all her cards, it just jumped out at me. So that was definitely, I think, in the back of my head when I was creating this. And I will link to her blog post in my blog post that you guys can check it out. Because if you don't follow her, because she doesn't always post videos for a lot of the cards she does, but oh, total inspiration. So anywho, I'm using the stamp. I put it in my Misty, remove the um, foam mat from the inside of my Misty so I could use this cling background stamp. And I was only going to make one card, but when I opened up my pack of Arches watercolor paper, I had two cut down pieces, this smaller one that I'm using here, and then a larger one. So I couldn't resist using the smaller one as well, and clear stamped it onto this piece of watercolor paper. It's slightly smaller than the 80s. It was like a wonky size. It was kind of like, I think, four inches by five inches or something like that. But I stamped it a couple times with Simon's Clear Embossing Ink, and then I'm using Simon's Gold, um, Detail Gold Embossing Powder. Melting all that with my heat tool. And then I tried to kind of show on camera, like I pointed out the sections, because I talk about this when I heat emboss. There's a couple spots where when I tilt the cardstock or like the watercolor paper in the light, you can see there's a couple areas that look dull, kind of greeny, they're not shiny. Those are spots that have not melted and I kind of tried to point them out so you guys kind of see what I'm talking about when I mention that. So those two areas I just got to hit them with the heat tool again until they're melted and then it's good to go. So always easy when you're using like metallics or color embossing powder it gets a little more tricky when you're using clear white which I'm going to use but that's always why I tilt it in the light because even with white on white you can still see areas that aren't smooth or shiny etc. So this other piece I cut down to um, a more manageable size in, you know, my sense. It's just easier to work with pieces that are a little bit bigger and then cut them down. And this one, again, I stamped with Simon's Clear Embossing Ink. And I stamped it twice. That's why I was using the Misty rather than doing what I normally do, which is just have my background stamp like face up on my desk and then I bring the paper to it. I've shown that in tons and tons of videos. But when you're stamping on, you know, textured watercolor paper and like arches is definitely very textured. Um, it's sometimes nice to have that little insurance policy of, you know, a misty to make sure I can stamp it a couple times and get a good impression. And you can use, like with this technique too, you can technically use almost any watercolor paper. Um, I, I have a bad tendency of hoarding the arches because it is, it's pricey watercolor paper, but every time I use it, I am reminded about why it's so great <laughs> and why I shouldn't hoard it because it just you get such good results with it. Like it is, it really is. It's worth the money. It's just, I know I understand that fully. I'm with everyone. Like it's, it's hard sometimes when it's, you know, the pricier supplies and yet that's the whole point. <laughs> you get better results. So anyway, with this technique though, because you're not really like painting or doing anything fancier, you could, and I have many times, it's just, it is, even with this though, it does make a difference. I could tell a difference. But it's still, you know, this isn't like painting. I literally did, just like I showed, sprayed this heavily with water. This is also where having um, higher quality watercolor paper works because I'm not, I didn't tape this down at all. I sprayed it heavily with water. And then my oxide sprays, I just, you know, shook them side to side and then put the spray directly onto my glass media mat and I'm picking them up that way because it gives me way more control 
rather than trying to just spray this background, you know, you're going to spray everywhere. You can't really control where the spray is going to go within reason. So this way I can kind of keep the color where I want it. It also appeals to my, you know, what I show in a lot of movies, my messy watercoloring where I go outside the lines and that. I do the same thing here. It's, you know, I keep it somewhat contained, but I'm still kind of going all over the place because I want it to be a little more organic. I don't want it to be perfect. Um, I'm just having fun with it and just kind of seeing what will happen. So because I was going with the colors from last week's Color Throwdown Challenge, I used uh, Picked Raspberry Oxide Spray. I used Victorian Velvet. Then I had Mowed Lawn and Squeeze Lemonade. And just picking them up from my um, glass mat. And I've mentioned this also other times I've done things like this with the Oxide Sprays. Any sort of spray like this that has a, like a pigment in it or like a mica, you know, shimmer in it. Um, if you put it on a like a palette or anything, the the pigments, the micas, etc., those will settle to the bottom. So they will look different than they do when you first apply them to your palette, which is fine. I just mix it up with my brush, but I just I point that out because some people are kind of unsure, like why is it separating? Well, it's just the nature of the product. So that's why you would shake it side to side in the bottle before spraying it, or in this case, when you're applying it to a palette. You know, you just kind of mix it up with your brush as you're picking it up. Or sometimes it's kind of fun to pick up just the, the liquid part on the top. I've done that in other videos as well. So just kind of getting to know what it is you're using, what, what product you're using, what it's meant for, what it does, and then breaking all those rules anyway. <laughs> that's, the, that's the joy of like being creative and all that kind of stuff is sometimes it doesn't really matter what it's intended for. Um, I only point those things out just so people are aware, you know, the intended uses or what it's supposed to do and then make your own judgment, do your own thing, have fun with it. So anyhow, did all that easy splattery painting and then let, I dried it with my heat tool and then I mixed Perfect Pearl powder on my mat with water, heavily splattered this, like so much splatter, all the splatter, um, even added more water and splattered even more just because it just creates like kind of a shimmery effect and I picked up some of the excess with my paper towel because that also kind of reactivates those oxide sprays so you just get that fun you know splattery water effect look and then that piece I set aside and then I did the exact same thing basically with the piece that I had white heat embossed except this time I didn't add as much color like the first one I was my normal heavy-handed self which is just usually how it is with me. Um, with this one, I let there be a little more kind of water, tried not to like layer the color too, too much because I wanted that lighter look to it. And also because I was like using up what I'd put on my mat. I didn't add any more of the sprays, any more color. I just used what was there and just added water to them. And, but doing the exact same sort of a thing, kind of keeping the colors a little bit more contained. So, you know, the pinks and the Victorian velvet on the flower petals. I used the squeeze lemonade for the centers. And then I just used the green, like the mowed lawn for the leaves, as well as for kind of the open areas between, because that kind of just helps give a little bit of um, separation between all of this, especially when it's white on white, because sometimes it's a little bit harder to see. But this one, I didn't go back and add like any more color to it. I liked kind of how it looked um, a little bit lighter. So again, it's always, it's up to personal preference. So after I was done with this one, I did the exact same thing. I let it, um, I sped up the drying, got it completely dry with my heat tool. And then I'm going to do the Perfect Pearl splatter on this one as well as well as just splatter with the remain the remainder of those oxide sprays that are on my mat because why not so i used the oxide sprays just mixed them up with more water splatter those onto this background and then these i let sit for you know a minute and then picked up with my paper towel just to kind of lighten it a bit because i didn't want the splatter to be too intense i just like the you know the look it gives so added all my splatter till i was you know happy with it picked up the excess and then I'm going to add some more of that perfect pearl mixture splatter which somewhere around here it just reminds me when I'm editing videos sometimes some of the random things it's like I have a little mini mister bottle that I've like pre-mixed perfect pearl powder and water in so I already have like my shimmer splatter around here somewhere I just those little bottles those little mini mister bottles I swear they grow legs and walk off I'm still wondering where it went but this works too it's just kind of convenient to have it you know in a little mister bottle so 
mix that up on my glass mat, picked it up with my paintbrush, heavily splattered, used it all up because you don't want to, you know, let any of that go to waste. It's just shimmery goodness. So added all that splatter and then same thing. I'm just going to set this aside to completely dry, wipe off my work surface and then get to all the elements of the card, other elements of the cards, which specifically the thanks and encouragement word mix one. I was going nuts over this set with the release. Talked about it in the release and review, review video. I didn't have the die set at the time, but now I do. And that's what makes this set so perfect. This is one of those sets where you technically need the die. You can do without it. You can trim things down yourself, use the stamp as is, whatever. But the die makes this so much more fun. And I mentioned this in the release and review video and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not privy to, you know, the ins and outs and what's going to be released. But because they called it Word Mix 1 makes me hope and, you know, that they're going to do more, more sets like this, more mixes of sentiments with either like other coordinating dies as well as it'd be nice to have ones too that would coordinate with the set of dies too, you know, get more bang for your buck. But I love that. So I stamped the thanks and encouragement word mix one. I used the thank you stamp. It's all one stamp. And then there's a second stamp in that set that has like encouragement phrases in the same sort of layout. I didn't use that one today because I just wanted to make more thank you cards. But I like the fact that you have two different styles of sentiments in the same set. Each one is one large stamp, just like this. All you gotta do is stamp it and die cut, that's it. So I white heat embossed it the first time on black cardstock. And then I stamped it a second time onto white cardstock with some Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And then I'm going to line up the coordinating die, which is all one piece, all one die. So you just kind of got to get it lined up. Um, I just kind of went like corner to corner, got it lined up, taped it into place. And now I'm just going to run this through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine here. And this is the magic of this set. And that's why I love it so much and hope they do more is now I have all these sentiments die cut in all different little sizes. Like I love that there's, you know, there's circles, there's little banners, there's a little like heart shape even. Love it. So ran that all through, got all those sentiments die cut. I just throw them in. I have these little pinch bowls. Um, people ask me about these when I do show them on camera. I picked them up at a sort of local home decor store that has gone out of business. Um, they're all cat faces, <laughs> but yeah, they're meant for spices. So they're just little pinch bowls and I keep them in my office and this is what I use them for, or I'm not even going to lie. Um, I put candy in them too. So when I'm snacking and working and all that kind of stuff, they, they come in handy for all sorts of, you know, applications. So anywho, did that with die cut, both those sets of sentiments, set those aside, have to finish the inside of my card, of course. So I pulled out, um, the Daisy bouquet stamp set. I just wanted to use this individual stamp just kind of tie it all together. So I'm inking up the stamp with the Victorian Velvet Oxide ink and then I'm rocking just the edges of the petals in the picked raspberry oxide ink just you know to bring the color in and then to really finish off the inside with all the colors of the color challenge um, I pulled out the squeezed uh, lemonade and the mowed lawn oxide sprays. I'm going very lightly with this lemonade here just painting the centers because this is just heavyweight white cardstock this isn't watercolor paper but adding a little bit like this isn't going to do too much harm. It's when you start adding a lot of water that the paper will start to swell and pill and look very unattractive. But little amounts like this, it's fine. So I painted that on and then I just um, added a little bit of the yellow as a splatter and that wasn't enough for me. So I put more on my acrylic block here and then splatter that onto the inside of the card. And then to bring in the green, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to clean off my brush, add a little bit of the mowed lawn oxide spray to my acrylic block. And then um, I'm going to splatter that on the inside. Oh, and another random thing that I wanted to mention. Um, what I did on the watercolor panels with the background, you could totally use like oxide inks, um, distress inks, etc. Like anything, really. You can use watercolors. It's all fine. I chose the oxide spray specifically though because of their liquid consistency and just they're fun to play with. I But anything, you can get similar results with, you know, your watercolors, um, water reactive dye inks, and the distress inks, obviously, either the regular or the oxide. Um, yeah, the world is your oyster. You can kind of use whatever you want. I am just one of those people that I like having all the coloring mediums and just... I just pick whatever's, you know, whatever my mood is at the time. So anywho, trimmed all these down now. 
um, that oblong sort of a shape. I only trimmed down a little bit, so it ended up being three and three quarters by um, five inches, just to make it fit nicely on an A2 card front. And then the white heat embossed floral background, I cut that down to four inches by five and a quarter, roughly, so just slightly bigger. And then both of them completely covered the backs with Simon Says Stamps Big Mama foam tape so that it will hold these flat. The gold one didn't warp very much. The white one warped a little bit more, probably because it was a larger piece and I was heavier handed with the water on it. But both of them, once they were adhered to the card base, they're good to go. So got those adhered and then picked out the sentiments. I wanted to use all the remaining ones. I'm just gonna like either keep in the little dish on my desk or I'll put in the packaging with that stamp set. So the next time I go to use it, I've already got a bunch of sentiments stamped and die cut ready to go. And for the ones I chose for these cards, I adhered the larger sentiments with the same Big Mama foam tape. And then the smaller ones I just adhered with Simon's Craft Tacky glue. And then of course saved a sentiment to adhere to the inside of each of the cards. So got both of those adhered. And then as my final bit of embellishment, I went through my stash of Studio Cadia crystals and chose a few that would go with these colors. So I chose the November collection, which is the Sunny Topaz. And then I added some gold ones and then a few clear ones just to, you know, mix it up. Sprinkled those rather liberally around both of these card fronts. And then I'm just gonna adhere them into place with little dabs of the Craft Tacky glue. And that's gonna finish off these cards. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a link to the color throwdown challenge if you wanna check that out and play along. Um, I'll have a supply list with all the links to the supplies used so you can check that out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!